I'm studying facilities engineering uh, with uh, the engine license. I selected engineering specifically because um, I initially went to Clarkson University for mechanical engineering um, with a scholarship with the Army and after coming here um, and realizing that this was a career that better suited my needs um, for the future, uh, I continued doing facilities engineering instead um, and continued with the engine license when I first came. Uh, my experience thus far here has been, uh, I'd say rather interesting, interesting in the sense that I've made uh, some really good friends and at the same time of, I've realized how, how far my work ethic can go along in times of stress. So whether that be during school or whether that be on crews, uh, I found that I've been able to work through a lot of those things and get a better understanding of myself. My mother's from Colombia and uh, most of my family lives down, uh, lives down there as well. And uh, I was raised partly in Brooklyn as well as partly in uh, Uniondale, Long Island, um, small town in, in Long Island. And um, yeah, I would say my, my heritage and culture is definitely a blend between Hispanic, um, Caribbean Hispanic culture as well as just Caribbean culture in general, um, as well as a mix with uh, American, uh, Black American culture specifically. Black History Month to me I think is a time and a month in which all people are supposed to commemorate uh, Black people and Black history really in general and I think at least what's more important to me is the the, the whole of black history as opposed to it just being in one, in one month. I, I really wish, like I know uh, <laughs> when Mother's Day comes around and I always tell my mother Happy Mother's Day, it's, it's never uh, thank you, it's always, you know, you should celebrate Mother's Day every day, right? As opposed to it being just um, a one day thing and in the same way I think that uh, it would be more of a service to commemorate black people, not just specified in one month, but rather you know, throughout the whole year or really just constantly research that as opposed to just kind of condensing it into one time of the year. When I think about black history, um, sometimes in its reflections or at least what, uh, what I'm taught sometimes, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed only because um, I think black history is so vast and, and there are so many parts to it that aren't necessarily easily understood. And as a result, I wish that um, there would be more commemoration to people who aren't necessarily uh, talked about or people who aren't necessarily well known um, and leaders who aren't um, you know, at the forefront of history or what has been perpetuated in that. I think that if more was spoken about about those who, whose names aren't broadcasted or who, whose names weren't necessarily mentioned um, as much as others, um, I think you know, I think it would definitely be a nicer to, to see something like that. Black history, really, I'd say one of my role models, uh, or two, if, if it's okay if I say two, uh, would be Marcus Garvey and uh, Asata, Asata Shakur. And I, choo I choose those two because one, Marcus Garvey was uh, a large proponent for um, black nationalism and black pride, as well as, you know, independence from oppressive systems within uh, the society. And I think that understanding that is extremely important only because um, there are reflections of those systems in, 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 in the country now. And I think understanding how to navigate within those are extremely important. And I said uh, Asata Shakur because um, her life was really a story of facing a lot of issues within this country during that time, so which that was around the 60s and 70s uh, of American history. And um, I think I consider her my role model, or I consider her my role model because um, in the face of all of that, she still showed her appreciation for black culture and still showed her appreciation for, uh, for the community as well as trying to advocate for that. So um, I, I deeply respect and revere those, uh, those two role models. Regarding black history, I'm, I'm most proud about how rich black culture is. And uh, since the beginning and, and despite, the, despite the oppression and despite the, the uh, issues of suppression of black culture, black culture has continued to prevail since then, whether that be in, um, whether that be in music, whether that be the ingenuity and innovation of uh, maritime, officers, one of the first black captains uh, in the maritime industry, or whether it would just be, you know, the influence of, of black culture and music, whether that be um, 
the African rhythms in, in, in salsa and merengue or, uh, you know, um, jazz in, in hip hop and trap. Like, I, I think just understanding that and how rich that is and how much it's affected um, everything in this country until now and really had an influence over, I'd say, everything really is, uh, is what I'm proud of. If I had to meet uh, two well known um, black people from the past as well as the present, um, it would be. James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni, and not too long ago they, they had a, well, in, in the 70s they had a, a very interesting interview that I would have definitely loved to be a part of or at least uh, listen to in person um, and hear their thoughts as it was going through. I'd want to meet uh, Nikki Giovanni and James Baldwin because they, their mindsets came from two different eras within American history um, and thus within black history, black American history. Um, and I think most importantly because in that time they were discussing issues uh, that although present at that time are still relevant to now um, and thus to get their insight from the, the, the sociological implications of black people within that time as well as now uh, would definitely have been very interesting or would be interesting if I had the chance to meet them. So I think asking them their advice and understanding their knowledge of um, the black community at that point as well as the black community within American society um, and their, their understandings of that now would be really interesting and that's why I would want to, uh, I'd want to meet them. I would hope my contribution would be to incite more learning into the next generation of black people in particular institutions. So I would say um, particularly in um, universities, right, in colleges. So I've, I, I've come to a university which is predominantly white, and as a result, there are a number of things that uh, goes um, misunderstood or people don't necessarily understand about me here. And it's only in the, in the niche groups that I've created around me of other black people or other minorities in this school um, that we've been able to get a better understanding of ourselves and get a better understanding of how to navigate within these systems, which in most cases can be very det detrimental. And, um, and a lot of people here, despite, uh, or a lot, of a lot of people here unknowingly perpetuate a lot of harm. And I would love for that in the future, uh, for the next people that um, I'd be able to create something, whether that be a club, whether that be uh, a group, whether that be something where people can um, come with one another and have a, have a space that is safe for them to express themselves, whether that be through black culture, whether that be um, through their own, really, I think that that's, that's something that I would want to create.